everyone, it's me, Laura, from The Papered Soul. Welcome back to my channel. Um, and I am continuing on uh, for my um, series, the Sunflower series of Make a Journal With Me. And I am using the um, Artie Mays kit, Sunflower Bloom. I'm also using the add-on for it, and it is an absolutely beautiful kit. Um, <clears throat> this is the fourth installment, so this is the fourth episode. And I've already shown, you know, bits and bits and pages of the kit. So, but you can see how beautiful, how beautiful it is. So, lots of lovely elements to work with and play with. Tags, tickets, banners, you name it. Um, and then the journal cards and, and everything. So, just, just a beautiful, beautiful kit. So, we're having a lot of fun with that. And I'm trying to keep it going so that, you know, I'm staying consistent in getting this journal done. And I'm <clears throat> trying to, excuse me, I'm trying to record, you know, everything um, that I do. And I'll try to take out any kind of mundane things if I'm able. Um, <clears throat> for an example, I already prepped this little um, little tab because we had done some tabs. And I showed how I do my little tabs uh, to make them sturdy on a previous episode. So anyway, I've got my peppermint tea again. Um, it is... Saturday afternoon. It's been raining and it's very cloudy out there. You might can tell a little bit with the lighting, but I think that it's still okay uh, for you to see the lighting. I take a little sip of that tea. Okay, so it's kind of cozy. You know, I love, I actually love cloudy, rainy days. Um, it's just cozy to me. So you'll have to let me know uh, in in the conversations, you know, the comments below if you like rainy days too. I know that I do. And I, like I say, I do hope I'm going to check my lighting one more. Yeah, I think you can still see things pretty good. <clears throat> okay. Um, what I wanted to start with is just some more elements that, you know, pick up where we left off. And um, the first thing that I actually wanted to do, when I was printing um, this out, I, I made it smaller. So I'm, I'm hoping my cover will be about uh, five by seven. So <clears throat> kind of testing my pages, I had this little extra piece here and uh, that I was testing it with. And I don't like these to go to waste. So what I think I'm gonna do is make some journal cards. This is one of her pretty line papers. And I'm going to uh, cut it down the middle and cut it this way and have four different extra little journal uh, cards in my in my book. So um, what I thought I would do first is go ahead and just glue that down on some, uh, just back the whole thing and then I'll cut it afterwards. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I kind of like, if there's a little bit of a um, square pattern on that from my baking pan. So. I'm going to just go on and glue this down. And it's so funny because it almost seems like it's getting darker. I hope this will this will work. I thought about getting a daylight light out here, lamp out here, but sometimes I think that ends up casting, you know, even more shadows. So could be we might get be getting ready to get a little more rain. I don't know. So anyway, I'm just gonna just put glue all around this really good. And then I'm gonna go on and tack it down and back it with that coffee dye paper. And then I can just cut it um, all at one time. And it'll already have the backing on it. So that's what we're gonna do. Because as many of you already may know, I do like to have nice, sturdy, um, tags and journal cards and elements so that it's just gonna hold up hopefully for the test of time and I'm gonna let this dry be drying and we'll cut that at the end so I'm gonna let this be drying while we move on to our other stuff I was also gonna tell you um, the Fabri-Tac that I use um, be really careful I have said this before about not letting it ooze out onto any furniture because it will ruin it. It will eat the finish away, and I had that happen. 
Um, but I also wanted to mention something else I noticed. This stuff must be really powerful because there's been a be time before where I've glued it something like that before, just that way, and then I kind of just stuck it on the table because it wasn't, there was no glue on it. But the fumes, apparently before it dries, can also dull your finish, believe it or not. That is, I know that's crazy, but that has happened to me before too. So I thought I would mention that as well. So it's really important to put that up on something away from your woodwork. Um, okay, and then the other thing I wanted to pick up on was where we left off. And I'll flip through so we can kind of just see for those of you that maybe haven't seen it yet, but I hope you'll watch series, you know, in, in a row because it's a flow. I'm trying to do the flow and you can kind of see where I am, how I arrived at the pages I have so far, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, it'll make more sense. Okay, so we were here, I believe, kind of when I left off, and I had my little posty sticker there just to remind me of what I wanted to do because, like I say, I don't want to forget my ideas. I uh, am thinking of putting a quote here, and this one was the um, this one was the original I was going to do. I've already printed it out um, on coffee dye paper, but this one is a little bit um, long, and I wanted to add a contrasting piece of paper behind it. So what I'm gonna do is um, I, pr I know I had already like printed out just a rough print on regular copy paper, my quotes that I do. And then I'll, as I go through and decide where I want them in my journal, that kinda, I'll cut them up and it, I can, it'll let me know, okay, I wanna put this one cause this one's gonna fit pretty nicely. And I also already know what kind of background I want. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not ready to do it, to put this quote down yet, because what I do is I get all my quotes placed throughout my book, throughout my journal, and where I want them. And then, if I need to tweak my font, or make it smaller, or anything like that, so you can see where I type these up, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll fix them before I print them all out, and I'll print them all out at one time. So that's usually what I do. Um, I did, for the sake of that one, kind of went on and fixed it and printed it out on coffee dyed paper, and that was in a previous installment. So because this is not coffee dyed paper, I'm gonna tuck this quote in this pocket because I know that that's the quote I wanna use on this front of this pocket. And so I'm not gonna be able to decorate that one today or in this installment, I should say. But I had already planned that when I do, I might be using some of this kind of paper for a contrast. So that, that's the color I might do. Well, so, since I'm not ready to do that and I've already chosen my paper, what I'm gonna do, I've got quote pocket, which I'm doing, and I'm gonna say use yellow green um, pa uh, paper. And then I'll remember, hey, I've already picked out the paper. <clears throat> not that it's set in stone, but it just helps me remember where my brain is. And so we'll continue on with that another time. So, since I'm not gonna use this one in this little section, I'm gonna go ahead and there's an element that I wanna create um, using this quote that I'll put somewhere else in the book. So what I'm gonna do is get me some coffee dyed paper. And a lot of times, uh, as I've said before, when I do my baking, I will have like little uh, baking sheets or uh, cookie sheets and they'll have, it'll put these lines on it already, which is kind of nice. And so I try to work with those lines for um, good journaling, you know, good journaling space and papers and stuff. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this one, um, I think I'm gonna just fold it and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna go just take a little of this edge off on each side. It seems like they tend, the way I'm gonna fold it tends to do better if I don't use a, you know, and what I'm gonna do is cut this piece of paper in half, and then I'll cut the, you know, the edges off. And so, it seems like it does better when I narrow it a little bit, um, narrow it down just a little bit from a regular size piece of paper. So, let me go on and do that. I've got my cutter right here. So, I'm just gonna take the little bit of the ends off. If 
But, and I hope everyone's having a good day today. It's Saturday, gosh. I'm wondering if everybody has gotten to where they just go, oh, it is raining, y'all. It's beautiful. It's a, Oh, I love it. So cozy. Um, so I took the edges off, that regular piece of paper there, and now I'm just going to, um, I'll just go ahead and just fold it and get my little crease there, and then I'll cut it down that crease right down the middle. Um, but I was wondering if everybody is kind of back with things opening back up. Is everybody kind of back to their normal routine on weekends? Or I mean, are you going out shopping and, and just doing things for fun? I'm still kind of laying low. Um, but let me know in your comments what you're up to. Okay, so now I have these two pieces of paper. And, oh, I hope this works, y'all, because I kind of have to play with it. It doesn't always work for me. But I'm going to do... Um, just kind of take them like that and make that little, kind of a little, little bit of a point there. Okay, might be not even, I think it's even. Let me do a little more this way. All right, and then um, I'll fold it like that. And then I'll fold this up to meet it. So, I mean, I know this is something that we probably did back in um, school uh, and elementary school and all of that, but um, I did not get that even, did I? Let me try it again. But uh, I was inspired by Paula Lemon because I saw her, she's added stuff like this, and I liked that extra added paper. Um, that she did add into it. Let me see. So I just play with it is what I do to kind of get it nice and even. Okay? So I just kind of play with it like that. But I have found cutting a piece of paper like that and cutting a little bit off the sides um, gives me a good piece to kind of do that with. So you can see when I fold it all the way, then I've got myself a nice little, looks like a little folded up envelope. And again, I was inspired by Paula Lemon. I didn't make this up, but I do know the, all the little fun foldings of papers we used to do back in school. So then what I like to do with these, that's extra journaling. And what I like to do with these is add my quote to it to kind of help hold it down. And so I'm gonna back this with some pretty paper. And let me get my um, inking. I don't know if y'all can hear it raining. It's raining really hard. So what I'll do is I will ink around here. But yeah, I'm still laying low. I'm, I need to go do some actual shopping and um, I just keep putting it off. I need some new tennis shoes and some other things and I just kind of keep putting it off and I don't know. I just, I'll tell you one thing, when I wear my mask, <clears throat> it is just, I'm a, it is so hot, y'all. Uh, and I'm so hot natured anyway. And um, it is just so hot. And I just, I would usually just try to get my stuff done as fast as I could, can because I don't want to be out there any longer than I have to. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this and give it like a little border, a pretty little edge to it. And I'm, you know, just going to eyeball how I do it and cut around it to get me, to make that kind of pop. And... And I'm gonna just give it a nice little border all around. And then I'm gonna cut around it. See, 
I go. And then, um, again, you know how I am. I'm, I'm, I've got to back that now because I do not do, I have to back that because I, I have to have it sturdy. Because if you're gonna be tucking this underneath there, see, I'm gonna pull the, be pulling that in and out. I don't want I don't want that to rip, so I'm gonna back it, double back it. So you know this I do I do this with all the elements in my journals, and you know I do it because I want it to be sturdy, and it does take time to do all this, but I would rather reinforce it, you know, so that it's gonna hold up for the use that it's gonna go through so I do not mind that is time well spent in my opinion all right so then I just cut around that some of y'all are getting a, um, able to get a little bit of uh, crafting done yourselves today. I didn't get to do anything yesterday, so craft-wise, so that's okay. I may try to do two videos today, but I do I just want to keep it going, you know. I don't... I don't want y'all to lose momentum in watching these, so I want to put them out pretty frequently. Okay, and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, just paper clip this, and the reason I'm doing that is because uh, and not just going on and gluing it. You could go ahead and glue that if you wanted to. It's a absolutely ready as an element to be glued. But the reason I'm not yet is because I want to sew around this, okay? So what I do is I get things placed where I want them and I paper clip them so I don't forget and I know what I'm going to do. Um, the other element that I was going to add to this was a little ticket from... The beautiful kit here and that beautiful sunflower the quote says a sunflower field is like a sky with a thousand suns and that is a quote by Karina Abdulam Nigura and I just thought that was a beautiful quote and so I am gonna just cut this and I thought it would really be cute if I tuck that in there so I thought that'd be a neat little element to tuck in there. So, let's do that as well. Get my little scrap paper here and I'm gonna go on and glue that down. But I have always loved rainy days ever since I was a little girl. I just love them. And I can go a long time without, I mean, without sun. But I have to say, we have had, not this year, but we have had some past years where it was so much sun and very little rain. It was like, or no, let me put it, no, so, so much rain. And I, I, I never thought that I would have trouble with it, but it, it did kind of go on for a good little bit. And even I was ready for the sun. <laughs> I worked in my shop this morning and I got some new items, supplies listed and um, or relisted also. Um, those little white envelopes that have the, they look like florist envelopes and they have the little um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The little opening that you can see through windowed they're windowed white envelopes and everything and they're a lot of fun to to craft with so i got a new batch of those in and they're ready to go 
and I am going to be, I got some new items that I'm going to be listing. So be on the lookout, check back frequently because I do try to get some new things in also in my shop. I'll put all the listings or the information links below. It's the paper sold on Etsy. It's a craft and journal supply shop, but it is, you know, my little wink to my journal makers. I have the fun stuff in there for y'all and for our journals. And then I ink. And then, now sometimes I have sewn around these, and I may or may not. It just depends on how I feel uh, on the, because they're so small. Um, but I have done them. I've done a lot of the small stuff too. But what I'll do is I'll end up when I after I've sewn that, and I'll glue this on the edges and the bottom, and then I'll just tuck that in there, and that'll just be a really cute element somewhere else in the journal. So I wanted to show you that. And you know, that's kind of some of the things that I make. And I'm gonna put that over here right now. And then um, the next thing that I wanted to work on, um, I wanted to make a booklet. Um, and I was gonna do something different um, with this. I kind of, I have some ideas for booklets that I wanna make. But I think on this one, I'm just gonna make a, a regular booklet, which are just as cute and adorable. And um, I've decided not to, um, I've decided not to back this. I'm just going to leave it. Um, and I'm going to do some stenciling on it. And because um, I just want to break up some of that white, okay? So let's get this little cute booklet done and I'll show you how I do that. So let me do my stenciling first. That's pretty. And let's do might could use just a little bit of a color here and I'll have it looking looking like it's going off the page a little bit and I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much with all that stenciling all right so I got a little color there and also what I may come in and do is my to you know just do my little vintage edging also myself as sitting down and just crafting all day and recording all day and that has not happened yet I usually just get maybe one installment done and then I'll pop it out for you to view but I would like to just have a full day that's kind of un uninterrupted where I can do that but I haven't had a chance okay all right so now we're going to make the book book out of it, a little booklet, and I'm going to sew it in like a, like a signature, kind of like what we do when we're actually sewing our journal signatures in. And I have this um, fun little ledger paper. I'm going to have to get more of that in. I, ha I sell it in my shop, but I'm going to have to get more of that in, and I don't think I have it. I'm going to have to order that. 
Um, the other idea I had, um, I was thinking of some extra paper, types of paper I can use. Um, here's a scrap piece, and it's got lines on it, so that's my, that'd be a good piece to use right there for my, um, one of the main pages in this. That's perfect. Um, yeah, let me go in and mark that while I'm, while I've got it. Let's see if I'm even. Uh, I think that's a straight edge. There we go. And I'll just mark that like that and trim that, and then I'm gonna mark it over here. So we'll fix that up. Usually I'll put a couple of um, of the coffee dyed pages in, so I'll cut another one once I get that size um, size down. This one is a little bit big for this little booklet like that, so. I mean, even even on the height-wise, it's a little bit tall. So what I thought I would do is cut it kind of in half and then, you know, turn it this way. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take that piece and do that. So this is front and back with lines on it and everything. So it offers little spaces for journaling as well. And then the other um, element that I was gonna do for my booklets was, this is Recollections um, Planner. And I love planners. I don't plan in them like I should, like I, like I want to. I've had, I ebb and flow. I go through periods of time where I do it really well and I feel more organized when I do that. But um, I quickly get out of the habit of it. And so <laughs> this is an old one. I mean, this is like, let me take a sip. Mm. Thank you for letting me sip my tea. Okay, this is 2017, and these are pages that I never used. And so, this would be a perfect example of something that you can use. And I think that's where, maybe a little bit of where they get the junk journal, the word, the term junk journal. I know a lot of people are like, well, what's a junk journal? I don't view these typical journals that... I work on as a junk journal simply because I'm working from kits and, and papers. I mean, I guess it's all in whatever anybody thinks, but a lot of times if you're adding like envelopes or mail pieces that you get in the mail and you're utilizing um, items that you would normally throw away or recycle, if you're using them in your journal, you know, that's where it gets that term. And then of course we decorate them up. Some people, you don't have to decorate them up. You can just put them in there and use them for um, all kinds of all kinds of things um, for decorating for later or just leaving it as is you know for the appeal of it it's like look you know it's like being green you know making a, a green journal and um, using up things that you're not putting in the landfill and so I thought this would be really a neat some neat pages to play with um, and they even have yellow uh, the yellow dividers on them and so I thought that would be perfect. So what I'm gonna do is just tear, cause I do not wanna waste these. And so what I'm gonna do, and I don't even, the fact that it's 2017 doesn't bother me. And I may not, I may cut that part off, but um, I'm gonna take a couple of pages out because I thought it would be fun to maybe use these pages in a couple of different ways. So, let me first and foremost get this one that I've marked cut down, and then I'm gonna get another piece also. Let's see. Let me get me another piece of paper, of the coffee dye paper, and get it cut down as well. Got it right here. That might be pretty in my... Polka dots might be fun. That's... That'll be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this one down so I'll get my sizing. And let's see what we have. I think I'm about to get a kitty cat that wants to be in the show 
Let me put her up because she's going to get in the way. Come here, babe. Sorry about that. I thought I'd take a chance and leave her out and because uh, she was kind of keeping to herself, but then she decided to to make her presence known, and I can't concentrate like that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to trim out this one just a little bit because I kind of don't want the... Um, I want to get those little edges off a little bit, so I'm going to trim that out. And I'll have me another page. So now I have two pieces of coffee dot paper, and then let's cut this one. And I don't have to, um, you know, use both of them in there. And you know, my little corner rounder, I didn't bring it with me. And so I don't, uh, oh, I know. So that I don't um, have to leave you and go track that down, I think what I'll do, see how that's rounded right there? I think I'm just gonna use this as my guide. <laughs> Cause I could try to eyeball it myself, but I'm not real good at that. So I'm gonna pull that in just a little and kinda do my little line there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Kind of come back just a little. I've tried to eyeball that before and I'm just <laughs> not good at it. So maybe this will work, what do you think? Like I said, I do have one of those little corner rounder punches, but I didn't bring it in with me at the table. Um, so that's what I'll do. See, you can just fly by the seat of your pants and just be innovative when you don't have things at your disposal or if you don't have that type of thing. I know that tools for our crafting can be pretty expensive and, you know, <clears throat> it's always good, like, try to get them on sale, 40% uh, off if you're able to do that. A lot of times Michaels and Hobby Lobby will have that. Um, and, uh... See how this is gonna look. Hmm. I don't like that. Let me do this one too. But um, take your time as you. I mean, I've I've done crafting for a long time, and so you do kind of tend to just collect some things as you go along. Um, so, you know, don't feel like you have to have everything all at once. Just kind of take your time collecting things. And <laughs> trust me, before you know it, you're going to have more than you can even handle. Oh, I have so much stuff. But it is, I have to say, you know, it is nice to have things that make the crafting um, a little easier, a little more convenient. But... Um, there's also a lot of ways to make things happen if we don't have certain tools that we think we need. Just take your time and do it gradually is what I, what I would recommend, you know, because things can be 
pricey and add up and and just be real choosy too you know like if you don't have a lot of money um, at your expense like that just just be careful you know just think it through what what's really important for you to have you know okay so I'm getting a few of these um, let me think about how I want to lay them out this one. I might do a flip in this book. Just for something different. So it'll be sitting like that, flip out, or I'll do it like that. I'm gonna lay these out somehow, I'm gonna figure it out. Now, let's play with this. Um, what I thought would be neat is I also have like a little tag in here that I wanted to back. And what I may do is back it with this calendar. So that's another thing that I wanted to do with this with this calendar. And might be cute. That has pink on it. So it does not have pink back here. It's just got the calendar. So I think, I mean, even though that'd be pretty on another tag, Hmm. Hmm. Gotta think this through. I kind of want you to be able to know it's a calendar. I may go ahead and just, on this one, just go ahead and glue that down. And I hope y'all can see, I, I, like I say, my video may be a little bit darker than they normally are because of this. It was sunshiny earlier, and then, and then it got cloudy again. So I thought later on this afternoon it was going to be sunny, but you never know with the weather. So let me do, I'm just gonna go on and do that flush. So that'll be, that'll be kind of fun. Just something different on the back of your tag and you can still journal on it. So I'm gonna go on, I just jumped in there with that. I know I kind of got off my booklet, but I knew I wanted to do this one as well. I thought that would be something cute to do with these papers from my planner. I just hate for them to go to waste. It's just crazy for them to go to waste. They're, and they're just fun and pretty. And um, so there, you've got like a little calendar kind of look to the back of that tag, which is something different and unique. I'm gonna tuck that back away where I had that. And now for my, back to my booklet. I think what I'm gonna do for my booklet is use this piece. And I'm probably gonna gauge it, use this as my guide. I may keep Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on there, and then on the back side, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I will got it, yeah, let me see. I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna do that yet. I think what I will do is kinda have it Maybe like that. That's about, I'll just mark this one right here. And this down here. And then I'll just cut that, cut that off. And that should fit into my little booklet. So let's get that cut. I would pull my um, trimmer in frame of the camera, but it's just, it's its one of the big ones. It's the Fiskars, or Fiskars, and um, I love, by the way, this, this trimmer, and I will say when you think about tools and stuff that you want for crafting, I, I definitely would get myself, if you're able, get, it's a good trimmer is, is worth it and I know some of the others that I have um, have used oh you know what I 
probably shouldn't have cut that off. I should have probably left that end on it just for something interesting. But you know what? You can do something with that. I don't know what yet, but I'm sure I can incorporate that into my booklet. Anyway, um, yeah, so the um, Fisker's trimmer, I'll show it to you real quick while I'm talking about it. I've got it folded under right now, but this, this extends out um, under here. So see, um, it's, it's like that, but you can also use it folded up and have a little more storage space. But um, it's a self uh, sharpening. So every time you use it, it's, all, it's also keeping itself sharp. So that's really a nice tool to have. Um, all right. So I might ink this up just a little bit. Just done. Get those edges nice and we'll see how we can put our little booklet together do it on the other side about putting this together. So here's my front and then I'll start with a just a regular piece there. So let me fold that. And I think what I'll also do is my punching. You know me, anytime I can punch something and make it pretty, I'm going to do it. Um, because to me it just adds interest to anything and everything you do. So let's punch this piece right here that I just folded. And um, I use my little, it's just a dainty little scallop on the edge is what it'll do. That. Push that off. So this will be my first page. And I think I'm gonna use this one for this little flip out. I hope it'll work. The other day, it seemed like it was getting dull. Now, I have punched um, aluminum foil in these because I heard that that helps to sharpen them. Like take aluminum foil and then fold it over and then just punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it. Just keep punching it and supposedly that helps and I think it does. You can, I think you can do the same thing with your um, scissors too, those little decorative edge scissors. If they get a little um, dull, you can do the same thing. Um, do I want to trim that one out too and make it pretty? Why not? Why not? So for me, a lot of times, um, the fun of the journals uh, and journal making is in the details. You know, it's, it's in, you know, taking the time to do those little extra things that just kind of make it, you know, pretty, little, anything extra you can do. I had that like that. Okay, and this, I don't know. How did I say I was gonna do that? My flip out. Do I want it like that or do I want it maybe in the back? I'll try that. And then, um, I'll just do this in half. Hey, that's another thing I could have done, y'all, and I didn't, why didn't y'all tell me? With this, wherever, whatever ends had, had the curve on it already, I could have
could have just folded that and then gone around. Look, that, that would have worked and then gone around it. So that's a, something else you could do. All right, I think I want the holes on the top because, um, this, yeah, because I might add a ribbon to that later. And then, hmm. That, what would that look like if that was like that? Do I want that one in there? I like odd numbers. So, so, if, so one, two, three. You know what? Let me see. See, I'm just playing with it. I could take a little of that off and keep that little tattered edge on. And let me just take a little of this off. Oh, and I showed y'all on my other videos a small desk. This is this is a, I love it. So this is one that is just a lifesaver for me on my desk, on my desktop. That's just light. Excuse me for knocking the camera, but just light and easy to um, to deal with. Okay, so I had four pieces of paper here, but I think. I'm going to go on and fold this because I know. But it's nice to have just something quick to grab that trims. And that that trims really well. It's a Recollections. I got it at Michael's. So, what I might do is do it like this. Because then when I open, I've got that pretty edge right there. When I first open my booklet. I've got that pretty edge. And that, and that, and then this for the middle, for my calendar. So see, I just got that little bit of yellow in there, which is kind of nice and interesting. And then, you know what I'm gonna do with this? Since I trimmed that down, let me ink this. And I'm gonna tuck that in there too, as a little flip. up. Now, it does say August 2017. Um, I may leave that just like that because I don't know that that matters. I could come in and maybe put something there to decorate that if I want to. It's just whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's kind of fun when something is in there just random like that, you know? Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is put this little piece kind of like that. And let's crease that. And, and that'll be a cute little flip in there. So I'm going to do that, this, that little flip and that. Like I say, I like to have uh, an odd number of things for most, most everything I do usually. Um, threes, fives, sevens, what have you. That's kind of what I like to do. <laughs> so, um, so I line it all up and then we're going to sew this in like a regular signature. So I do that, and so then I got that little flip, then I have that, then I have that fun little piece of paper and a piece of paper for my calendar that I'm utilizing, and that, 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 and my little flip out. That is a cute and fun little booklet, don't you think? I think, I think it is. All right, so what I'm gonna do I do kind of like it, move that up a little bit. Yeah, I like it like that. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of get this even in between here. 
and then find the middle. Open it up like that. And I think I'm gonna put a little paper clip on it to kind of hold it in place. I don't know how I twisted that, but I did, didn't I? Just kind of eyeball it. Okay. All right, and then I take my, and I don't, I didn't bring my punt, my little pokey tool, but I usually use my pokey tool, but I have a, a needle that I can use to, to do that with, and I've got my thread here that I'm gonna do, so I'll poke it with the needle. But um, what I'm gonna do first is measure, just kinda trying to keep it as even as I can, and I'm gonna measure And so I take this ruler. This is another tool that, you know, I don't really want to be without. Um, it's a Tim Holtz ruler. And then, so if you don't have one, I mean, it's be a neat thing, nice thing to get for yourself. Um, and because it's got this zero there and then it goes out and it makes it easy to kind of measure when you're trying to get equal measurements from one end to the next. So I've got these on two and a quarter, two and a quarter. And then I want, and they're about the same distance beyond that. So then I know that this right here is going to be pretty much to my center. And then I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do an inch, an inch and a half this way, and then an inch and a half this way. And there we have it. Then I'm going to take my pretty pale yellow, and I think I'm just gonna do, I think this will be enough if I do um, one, two, little extra there. I might just cut a little extra just to make sure. And then I thread my needle. And I've got a needle that has a pretty, a, a large enough eye to, for this to go through. And what this is, is a crochet thread and it's a size 10. Uh, it's what I make my crochet doily and flowers out of. So I need to make me some yellow ones. I don't think I have any yellow ones in my shop. So then I just, um, you know, I'm just gonna punch this since it's small enough and everything. I'm just gonna kind of punch it with my needle. I think it'll work. Yeah, and then I'm gonna punch each one. Make sure it's still even. Okay, it's shifting on me. And then this one. The needle works, but I like my pokey tool better, but anyway. Okay, so I've got my holes in there. You can decide now, do you want your, um, do you want your strings to, do you want to dangle anything from the strings or, you know, once you get it tied off and everything, is that what I want to do? Or, uh, and if so, do I want them outside? Do I want to tie it in a bow? Do I want it? inside. I think I'm going to put these inside. That's what I usually do with my, my journals, but I have done them outside before. And um, so if you're going to have your string inside, I think this is the way I do it. I put it through from the inside and leave my tail. And then I come into whichever one I want to over here. And sometimes what you have to do to make sure your holes are going to be lined up is you kind of have to do each little page separate just to make sure you're lined up good. And so 
so that I don't poke extra holes in the pages. There we go. Put that little string down here up under that paper clip. And then, yeah, and so then I'm gonna, so you see what I did, I just came, put it through, came around back here, and then I'm gonna go all the way up to this hole. Just gonna kinda do a little few pages as I go. Just take your time with this, it's worth it. So then I come out the back like that, okay? And then I'm going to go into the middle and that will finish this up after I I'll tie it off. So go back through the middle. Let me come out from this side. glasses on. Sometimes the tedious close-up stuff I need my glasses. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I just want to make sure that I'm not going um, splitting that thread that, that I've already gone through that hole with. I just want to make sure that I'm not splitting it. And that's why I'm trying to be extra careful there. I don't want to cut through it with my needle there we go and then when you come up the other side I've got one piece here and I want to come out the other side of this middle strand okay so I want to come out the other side of that and pull all right so I'm put my needle up and then we tighten it up we're ready for tightening okay and you just want it nice and taut And then I'm gonna tie it off. So I just kind of tug on these. And since they're just so small and everything, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't take long to get that tightened up. And then I'm going to tie a little knot. And what I normally do is a square knot. And I'll try, <laughs> I did pretty good with my uh, links, but this one is a little bit longer. So I think to do a square knot, I'm gonna start with a long piece and I'm gonna, no, I'm going to do the short piece. So I'm going to put the short piece over. And then I'm going to take the long one and go over. So if you alternate it like that, I think you've kind of done like a little square knot, if I'm not mistaken. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my paper clip off. And then what I'm going to do is, yes, it's right side up. we got to make sure, yeah. Everything's good, everything's good. Uh, and then, you know, I'll trim my strings, or if I'm not, if I want, I can just tie a bow here. I'm gonna tie a bow right now, but you can tie like a little bow and trim that out if you want to. I may decide to hang something inside from my strings like we do in our journals. Um, but, uh, so I won't cut it until I make that decision, okay? So there's my little booklet. And I can decorate this. I could add little pockets to it if I want to. If I decide to do that, I'll do it. Um, I'll do it on camera if I decide in the next installment. So that's a fun little booklet and then a little flip out. And what I'm gonna do, where that's gonna go in my journal is over this page here. And I will just drape it like that and I will probably because it has a little thickness to it, um, we'll definitely have to put like a little paper clip to hold it, and I might get like a special paper clip. We'll just see. Um, so I have some decorative paper clips that are always fun to use, but if I don't have any, I'll just have to see. I'll check. So that is what I plan to do with my booklet there. And if I decide that that is too thick there, you know, I can always choose to put it somewhere else in the book. 
I'll have to see. I mean, it, it still works. It all works no matter what you want to do. So it's right there. Um, but we'll just see. Okay. All right. Let's see if there was anything else I wanted to do. There was, I had some others, but I think I'm going to stop it because I might have gone a little longer. Everything always takes longer than you think it's going to take. So I'm going to stop this episode now and we'll pick up where I left off. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this episode, episode four. I hope you'll have a chance to go back and look at, um, episode one, two, and three before you view this one. Um, or if you love this one and then go back and catch up and just kind of see how I started this. So I am making a journal from start to finish. I'm using the Sunflower Kit, Sunflower Bloom by Artie Mays. And it's a beautiful kit. It's very inspiring to work with. She has lots of elements in these kits of hers. And it just really does help you, you know, become really creative with things. Um, so thanks again so much for joining me. And I hope you have a very lovely afternoon. Bye.